This is Geometry Lesson 7-9, Diagonals of Quadrilaterals. We studied the diagonals of our quadrilaterals indirectly. We looked at all of the different special quadrilaterals in our hierarchy in Chapter 6, and then we looked further at parallelograms here in Chapter 7. So we're going to put together all of the different properties that came about as we uh, studied those quadrilaterals and see how they can be organized in a, in a hierarchy based on diagonals. And you'll notice that as we organize those in a hierarchy that it really takes on the same shape as our special quadrilateral hierarchy. So let's look at what, we've ar what we already know. Kites, rhombuses, and squares each have a diagonal that is the perpendicular bisector of the other diagonal. We know the diagonals of parallelograms, rhombuses, rectangles, and squares bisect each other. And we know that in isosceles trapezoids, rectangles, and squares, corresponding parts of the two diagonals are congruent. So let's take a look of these of the, of the look at the arguments and how they look in a hierarchy. As you can see here, this hierarchy looks very much like the one we studied before. The only thing is, is that the trapezoid, <coughs> excuse me, and the actual quadrilateral um, are not shown, but if you look at the kite, we know that it one diagonal is the perpendicular bisector of the other, so a rhombus is a kite, so that holds true there, and a square is a rhombus and a kite, so that follows through. Diagonals bisect each other, so that's a quality of the parallelogram, but since rhombus, and rectangles, and squares are all parallelograms, those also follow um, the diagonals bisecting each other. And then on the other side here, both parts of diagonals are congruent. So if you look at the isosceles trapezoid, that holds true. Rectangles and squares. So let's take a look now that we've put these all together and see how we can apply them when we look at various different quadrilaterals. We're going to skip those activities that are listed on underneath the hierarchy because we're going to do those in class together. So I want you to, we'll work on these problem sets here, one through six, but I want you to have your hierarchy that we just worked on available so that you can look at it. So we want to name all the special quadrilaterals that exhibit the properties listed below. So the diagonals are congruent. So if you look at that, you go to the right hand side of your hierarchy, you see both parts of the diagonals are congruent. So that is the isosceles trapezoid, the rectangle, and the square. Let's look at number two. The diagonals are both congruent and perpendicular. So it has to be all in order, it has to have both of those. So we know that it can only be the isosceles trap, the rectangle, and the square, but it has to be something where the diagonals are perpendicular also. So that's on the far side of the hierarchy. So that would have to, and the only thing that connects into um, each other would be the square. I'm going to go back up to that picture in the hierarchy. So here we look, these are all the shapes that have diagonals that are congruent, and then in this side, this is all the ones that have perpendicular bisectors, so these would be perpendicular to each other. So the only thing that both of these two have in common is a square, so that's why the answer to number two was a square. Number three says the diagonals are perpendicular but not necessarily congruent. So if you look down on the side where it talks about the perpendicular bisectors, this row here, the kite and the rhombus are perpendicular bisectors, so we know the diagonals are perpendicular and also a square. But with the square, the diagonals are all congruent. But So we don't necessarily want to include that, so we're just looking at the kite and the rhombus. All right, let's do the last three examples here. Give the most specific name for the quadrilateral. So in number four, we know it's got four right angles, and we know that the diagonals have to bisect each, or I'm sorry, the bi diagonals are perpendicular to each other. So by definition, at first, if you just look at the four right angles, that could be a rectangle or a square but a rectangle does not have perpendicular diagonals, so this has to be a square. Look at number five. We have one set of parallel sides, so that would be a trapezoid, but we know that we have diagonals that have some p 
pieces that are um, that we know that the diagonals intersect each other and that this diagonal and this or this part and this part are congruent in these two. So the only one that that would meet would be the isosceles trapezoid. Let's look num at number six. Here our bi diagonals bisect each other and we have opposite angles that are congruent and we also have the diagonals being the lines of symmetry. So in our study we know that this has to be a rhombus. We will look at the other examples in class. So for lesson 7-9 we will do the activities in class and we will do the rest of the examples 7-9 through nine in class as well. This concludes lesson 7-9.